In this part of the lesson, we're going to briefly look at how to save the code that we've already written. It isn't actually necessary to save code before you run it, but it is good practice to do so. The main reason for this is that once you run a subroutine, you can't use the undo feature in Excel to undo the changes carried out by the subroutine. So it's always nice to have some kind of backup copy to go back to should things go horribly wrong. To get started with saving things, you can save either in the Visual Basic Editor or within the Excel application. If you see that I hover the mouse over the save icon in the VB Editor, you'll see that it says save book one. So it's not just the code that I'm saving, it's any changes to the workbook as well. And vice versa, if I switch back into Excel and I choose to save in here, it doesn't just save changes that I've made to the workbook, it also saves any changes I've made to the code. So the code is as much a part of the workbook as a new worksheet or a chart would be. So let's choose to save. I'm going to save from within Excel this time, as I'm already here. I can then choose where I want to save it. This depends slightly on which version of Excel you're working in. So if I hit the Browse button, I can choose where to save it. And I'm going to place this just onto my desktop. One problem with saving workbooks which contain code is the default file type isn't compatible with VBA code. So the default file type that you can see here, if I zoom in so you can read it a little more clearly, is called Excel Workbook XLSX. If I attempt to save this workbook with that name and that file extension on my desktop, I'll be warned that I can't save workbooks containing VB projects in a macro-free workbook. So an XLSX file is referred to as a macro-free workbook. Um, it's always tempting when these dialog boxes pop up just to blindly click yes to just make Excel do what you wanted it to. But that's the wrong choice here. What we need to do is click no. We don't want to save this as a macro-free workbook. So I'm going to click no. What I'm then going to do instead is change the save as type from XLSX to a type that is compatible with macros or VBA code. So if I zoom in here and click on the drop down arrow for the save as type option, the obvious choice is the second one in the list, Excel macro enabled workbook .xlsm. It's worthwhile mentioning that the binary workbook is also compatible with VBA code and the binary workbook can result in smaller file sizes. So that might be worthwhile testing out for your own examples in the real world. For this particular example, I'm going to go with Excel macro enabled workbook. I'll leave the file called book one, and if I hit save this time, my workbook will now be saved. It's also worthwhile mentioning what will happen when you open up a workbook which contains code for the first time. So what I'm going to do now is close down Excel entirely. That will also close down the Visual Basic Editor as well if it's still open. If I double click on the file on the desktop to open up the file, what I'll see the first time I reopen it is a little warning indicating that the file contains macros and you haven't verify that they're safe yet, basically. So the default option when you open a file which contains macros is for Excel to have those disabled first, and you must choose whether or not you want to enable them. This is to prevent malicious code from running automatically when you open up workbooks whose source you're not entirely sure of. If I were to attempt to run my subroutine without enabling the content, I'll be warned that that's not possible. So I must choose to enable content in order to allow my code to work. It's worth mentioning that with the default settings in modern versions of Office, once you've chosen to enable content once for a macro enabled workbook, that workbook is considered to be a trusted document. So that means that if I were to close down the file entirely and then choose to reopen it, I won't subsequently be asked whether I want to enable content. It already is. This lasts until you do something drastic like change the file name or make a copy of the file and rename it. So were I simply to, for example, press the F12 key to bring up the Save As dialog box. I can save this workbook as, let's say, Book 2, so that I avoid saving over the original copy. So I'll call this one Book 2. It's a macro-enabled workbook, and I can choose to save it. Once I've done that, if I close down Excel, I can choose to open up Book 1, and I won't be asked whether I want to save to enable content. But if I were to close this one down and then choose to open up Book 2, this time, because it's technically a new file, although it contains exactly the same code, I have to choose to enable content again to make this one a trusted document.